our attention to the health of our children. For decades, doctors at the Helen DeVos Children's Hospital have been helping patients suffering from a common yet not very well-known condition, neurofibromatosis. And we have Dr. Karen Vanderlein here. She started a clinic dedicated to treatment and education. So the disorder is a mouthful. Why don't you tell us exactly what it is? So neurofibromatosis, and we call it the family, Neurofibromatosis type 1 is by far the most common. It's found in 1 in 3,000 individuals. It very commonly presents early in childhood, generally within the first 6 to 12 months, with skin findings first. And these are flat brown spots. They must measure over 5 millimeters. And then they develop um, the second sign, typically by 8 years of age, with freckling in the armpits or the groin area. Neurofibromatosis type 2 uh, typically doesn't present until the average 20 years of age. And that one typically can present with hearing loss, balance problems, or ringing in the ear. And then the third type is very rare, schwannomatosis. And we have only recently begun to find out more about that. And that's generally over 30 years of age. And so it's not um, something that many of us have heard about, even though one in 3,000, that really sounds pretty common to me. Correct. And I think before, you know, people thought of these brown spots as just simply birthmarks. And it wasn't until years ago that they started to put together that why one to four, and they're called cafe lait spots, mm -hmm. Maybe within normal limits, the magic numbers that should raise a suspicion for neurofibromatosis type 1 is 6 or more. They're found on both sides of the body, arms, legs, or the trunk, rarely on the face or scalp. And so what happens to um, patients as they progress through this disease? It's a, it's a chronic, it's ongoing, it's a, a neurological disorder. Does that mean it's degenerative? Um, typically, at least in children, learning difficulties are found in at least 50 to 60 percent of the children. So we're um, very involved with the schools and assisting and looking at the child's academic strengths, but areas that they may need specific accommodations. And as they age, they may develop what are known as neurofibromas. So these are tumors that can present on very small nerves in the body, whether on the surface or just under the surface of the skin. But they also can occur as tumors in the brain or possibly the spinal cord as well um, as they age. And you started this clinic back in 1990. I mean, 1990. it's been 26 years now Correct. for you. And so what have you seen that you're able to do because you do bring together so many different disciplines in this one clinic setting? Does that really help the patients and their parents make it easier? Our job is at the clinic is to make the diagnosis and to assist the primary care provider in especially watching for the more rare complications. We do neurocognitive testing to help with the learning difficulties and at times, if patients are affected by certain type of brain or spinal cord tumors, then we have oncologists that can assist with us. We have neurosurgeons. Scoliosis or curvature of the spine is increased. And we have orthopedic surgeons that are involved in our clinic as well. And so when you make this diagnosis, is it you look for those initial symptoms. Is there some kind of a deeper test that you have to do, or do you rule things out? For the most part, we clinically follow them. Sometimes we have to do MRI imaging. While there is genetic testing, the NF1 gene is very large. There are thousands of different types of mutation. So it's a cumbersome test. Um, there are several institutions in the United States that can do the testing, but average cost can run $5,000. And some insurances uh, don't want to cover that. So for the most part, it's a clinical diagnosis. And so initially when a parent, when a patient would come to your clinic, what would the protocol be? Just to do an initial analysis and just to say, this is what you should look for? which you yes. should be alert for as a parent? Well, we have a, a genetic counselor who's present, and she will take a family history, because half the time it's inherited from the parent, half the time it can be a spontaneous mutation. So she is involved with counseling our families to explain this. It's known as an autosomal dominant condition. We have a psychologist 
because especially in children they can have developmental delays they can have learning difficulties so they take a history quality of life can sometimes be affected they can arrange neurocognitive testing and then my job as a physician is to examine the patient in addition to taking the history and make the medical diagnosis educate the family in terms of what to possibly expect um, and then we have we always have an NF support group advocate with us and they have been with us since the start of the clinic we have a very large NF support group in Grand Rapids which is unusual mm -hmm. um, the president has been involved with our NF support group for many many years and if people are interested in getting in touch with you I'm guessing that initial referral may come from a pediatrician a, a family care yes. family practice doctor um, but people can reach out directly to you too correct mm -hmm. and how would they do that um, that we have a phone number mm -hmm. or website um, that they may contact um, I have a dedicated nurse who a lot of times handles the initial calls um, I talk to referring physicians frequently about whether a child should be referred to this clinic or not well sounds like you just have been a pioneer in this and people from all over the state coming to this clinic here at Helen DePoss Children's Hospital. Physicians that do the neurofibromatosis clinic were all very passionate about this disorder. Well, thank you so much. Great information. Thanks for sharing. Thank you very much. And stay right there. More of 8 West when we come back. Don't go away. Are you West?